Hello Bakery Con students. I'm Joe Barnell, be your instructor for the next seven weeks. So I hope everyone had a great holiday break. Uh, what I will do is I will post these every Sunday. Uh, I call mini lectures to give you kind of a preview of a week ahead and things to think about and some concept ideas. So try to keep it to about 10 minutes. This first one might be a little bit longer. But uh, we're now at January 2nd, uh, 2020, 22. So it's kind of hard to believe. So um, so far, you know, overall in our economy, uh, we're still working towards recovery from COVID, but we're also dealing with the uh, concerns of inflation. So it's something the Federal Reserve is uh, trying to balance right now. And there's been hints that eventually interest rates have been close to zero will eventually start rising. So, but anyway, for today, I um, wanted to uh, kind of give you an overview of the week so uh, and, and the course in general. And I also want to remind you, if you ever have any questions, do send me a question via email. I'll usually get back to you that day or the following day. If you want to meet uh, via Zoom, we can do that too. And I thought about it, I may entertain the idea uh, later sometime to just kind of have an office hour, a time that people kind of want to come in and have questions. It might be a, give you all an opportunity as a cohort to get to know uh, each other a little bit better. So anyway, for, for this week, uh, one of the main things to make sure to stress is uh, make sure to get yourself enrolled in uh, the My Econ Lab. I put information out there. I saw that a few individuals have been able to enroll in that. So you'll have those weekly quizzes that you'll do every week that will help you with the concepts. They always do like Sunday by midnight. Uh, you have multiple attempts on them. So I suggest starting earlier in the week, the better to give you more time to get uh, the full points on those. You also have your weekly readings. Uh, this week, you know, from your book, The Hubbard O'Brien, you know, just there we can have chapters one, two, and three. I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a bit. And then we have the, uh, with that, the forum discussions. So I do encourage you to jump in there early. You yeah, need to make an initial post by uh, Thursday before midnight and then follow up to at least two of your peers um, by Sunday at midnight. Make sure to follow the uh, prompt directions and the rubric and be respectful with your responses to all your cohort colleagues. Uh, make sure to follow APA format, uh, so proper in-text citations. Uh, when you're talking about uh, your article that you're looking at, uh, what you found out about that. And um, you know, if you have any questions on that, do ask me. But with the forum discussions, uh, we have a good-sized cohort here, about 16. I might respond about like half of you each week, kind of take turns. And if there's something that really interests me, I'll jump in there. But I do try to stay active in those forum discussions and respond uh, actively in the course. So, um, And the final thing is just want to uh, let you know about the common assessment. So go ahead and start thinking about that. What uh, uh, corporation or industry, I'd probably guide you more towards a corporation, uh, one that's publicly traded so you can find information. But this is a common assessment that you will submit to the uh, task stream, and then you also submit to the course in Moodle. But I'll, uh, that way I can give you a grade in Moodle. Uh, I put it out there as an assignment. So make sure to uh, submit to both, and I'll talk more about those when we get to that point in the course. So. Anyway, some uh, things that I want to go over, some concepts for this week, for your readings in chapters one, two, and three. Uh, your textbook authors, you know, pointed out Hubbard, O'Brien, uh, they, they start off with like three basic principles. One is that, that people are rational. And uh, what that means to be rational is that um, when you're presented with information, um, whether it's buying a house or buying a car, you're going to take all available information into consideration uh, before you make any type of purchase on a house or home. You're going to factor in interest rates. If people are going to buy a car, you're going to think in uh, terms of what the insurance is going to be on the car. What's the gas mileage on this car? So um, we're making the assumption for a lot of these economic models that people are rational. But there is a later in the course, we're going to read about uh, a field of uh, economics called behavioral economics which questions whether people are always rational or not. Do they, they make the best decisions? We saw this in the subprime crisis in 2008 when you question whether uh, people were being rational about the types of mortgages that they were taking out, you know, especially mortgages that you would never actually pay back principal. But at that time, even mainstream economists would argue that presented with the information they had, their expectations about the future, they, that they were making rational choices. And even if uh, some individuals are irrational in their decisions, 
um, you know, that's the group as a whole uh, that they will act rational and steward markets in a certain direction. So uh, you'll read more about that. But uh, with that, they also point out it says people respond to incentives. And this, I, I strongly believe in this. Um, you know, this time of year, I, I suggest to you all, if you can put any money in your uh, IRAs to do so, you have until April 15th to do that. But uh, the government has done that as an incentive to try to get you to save more. Um, and uh, we respond by investing more in our um, stock market, our bonds and all those by putting money into an IRA. And uh, the hopes would be that when uh, you know, government policy is trying to make uh, decisions for people or help guide them, if you will, that they're going to have enough money in retirement. So they, they allow you to lower your tax liability if you have a traditional IRA or if you go with the uh, Roth IRA that when you get to take the money out, um, you don't have to pay taxes on it. So that, that's just an example. But uh, I will point out that, you know, private property rights are uh, very important in economy. Uh, and in no way do we have a pure capitalist economy. We have a mixed um, economy of both um, socialist aspects and capitalist aspects. But, um, you know, that's kind of a where we have a, a lot of division in this country too, I think, is about which direction we're heading. And that's a question, you know, well, how are we going to pay for all these things and um, how are incentives going to change? So it, it, it's important. So we'll, we'll see what happens uh, as the years to come. Uh, last is just that people make decisions on the margins. So, you know, just a simple example would be marginal benefit and marginal cost. Um, do I buy an additional slice of pizza? You know, uh, how much time am I going to have to spend working out to uh, after I eat that slice of pizza? Uh, what is the cost associated with that? And any business decision, uh, whether to open up a new store or hire a new employee, or uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs today, hopefully they'll get a win day against Cincinnati is what type of players do we bring in? What is the additional benefit of that player versus the additional cost of that player? And it should really all be based on the marginal revenue uh, product of labor. You know, what, what value does that player bring um, to the playing field? So, well, uh, with that, you're also gonna learn, read about a little bit about positive and normative economics. Positive is more that something we can measure. So if I can measure the unemployment rate, or I can measure that if Oprah says to buy this book, we should see the demand curve shift out in a model. Normative is the value judgments or the opinions that uh, we should legalize marijuana because it has these benefits or we shouldn't legalize marijuana because it can have these negative externalities that will impact our economy this way or hurt people. Uh, the art of economics is putting those two things together. It's looking at economic models. It's looking at what is important to us and then ultimately coming up with policies either our government or about decisions that we're making in business. Now, what, where do we see the market going? You know, uh, What should we do? What, what, how do we need to revitalize our product or our service? Or uh, what is the direction of the market? You know, How are the winds changing? Are we reading the tea leaves right? So that's what I would say, putting those two things together is called what we would call the art of economics. In chapter two, you're gonna read a little bit about the production possibility curve. We will retouch this again later in the course with looking at the concepts of comparative advantage and the importance of uh, trade. We've kind of seen that with the um, supply side, well, I, I, say, I say supply chain distribution and the disruptions it's had. You know, I remember having to buy a dishwasher about four months ago and how difficult it was because they said that all the dishwashers are sitting on a ship somewhere. So uh, it's, you know, presents some interesting challenges, but we are truly a global economy today. and We depend on trade with uh, other countries and in no way would be, we would be able to enjoy the amount of goods and services that we had today if we were a closed economy. So most economists are very much in favor of trade. And they like to limit the idea of uh, having tariffs or quotas or any you know types of taxes that would limit that trade. The last chapter, chapter three, you can get into more about supply and demand analysis. Um, two key concepts I want to make sure to stress now is the difference between a change in quantity demanded or supplied and a change in demand or supply. So with change in quantity demanded or change in quantity supplied, I want you to think of it strictly in terms of price. It's just a movement along the demand curve or supply curve. So if the price of a soda goes from a dollar to a dollar fifty, you're simply going to move along that demand curve. 
a change in demand or a change in supply are factors other than price. So this is what's going to shift the curve out or it's going to shift the curve in. And the text is going to go through some other factors that you'll read about, but I want you to think of it this way. It's anything other than price, factors other than price that's going to shift that curve out. For example, advertising, the goal is to shift the demand curve out for the product so people would be willing to pay a higher price and uh, more consumers would consume your good or service. So, And uh, other than that, um, you know, I want you to uh, make sure to jump on there early with the forum discussion, stay active in the course. If you stay active in the course, stay on top of things, you'll be successful. But if you do have questions, do reach out to me. But I'll post this video in uh, just a little bit. Like I said, I'll do this every Sunday, kind of give you a preview for the week. But I am definitely looking forward to working with everyone over the course. Uh, if it's been a while since you've done, the good thing about the math in this course, it's pretty basic. You know, if you go over the idea of, uh, I would call averages, marginal uh, relationships relative to slope, you know, positive or direct relationships, negative inverse relationships. Uh, review that at the end of, I believe it's in uh, chapter one. That, that will help a little bit with understanding the graphs. But again, I'm always here to help. So anyway, I hope everybody has a great week, and I do look forward to talking to you online. So uh, take care, and uh, we'll talk to you later.